on, Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to a live tutorial here where I'm going to teach beginners and advanced beginners how to paint beautiful scenery subjects. This one is going to be an ocean scene, so I'm going to bring you right over here and show you, Ben, also the size of the canvas. It's an odd size. It's a leftover cutout size, and the colours that I'm using will be listed in the comments below. So come on over here, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to have a horizon line here. There you go. Look at that. And I will have some kind of island mass land out here, the ocean coming against the land here, a nice sky. And if I get time, I might put in a big leaning palm coming right from us going out into the thing. See how I go for time because I get carried away detailing the living buggery out of my stuff and it's hard not to do it. All right, so I'm going to bring you down to the palette. <clears throat> so I'm going to get started with my craft white because I want to prep my sky area. Okay, so as most people know, I paint in only acrylics. I don't paint in oil paintings, oil paints. Some people have asked, is that acrylic or oil? I know it might look like oil the way it looks when I use this retarder and soft, soft bodied titanium white, but that's the magic about it. So I'm going to mix this up in my brush. I might put her on a brush. Message me on Facebook if you want to buy my blending brushes and my put her on a brush. Now I'll get my camera up here. Up the doozy up there. There we go. Now you can see me sky area. So I'm going to map this on the sky area. There we go. Now we are ready for some simple and effective sky colors i need to wipe this brush because it's full of bits and bobs all over it sky color i want to go cobalt blue i just because i've got it i'm going to try it i'm normally a cerulean blue but let's give the cobalt a go up the top so i'm going to get this on me put her on a brush and i want to start mapping my sky in okay i'm going to start at the top I'm rubbing it in at the top. Look at that. Rubbing it in, rubbing it in. Now I'm going to bring it down and let it run away. Okay. I want a nice glare. Oh, you're an idiot. Ian. I was going to do a sunsetty sky and I've gone and done it blue. Too bad. Now I'm crisscrossing that line out of it. Start at the top and bring it down again and letting it wear into that white. Look at that. Using just the tip of my putter on a brush now. See the tip? It's got nothing on it, and I can control where I want that sky blended. I'm not picking up a half a dozen brushes blending my sky. It's all done in one matter, no mucking around at all. There we go. Beautiful Indian yellow. First time here, good stuff, and I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. Well, I hope you do. A little bit of that. And I also got in my tube here, I'm going to sneak out a little bit of, <clears throat> oh, not that much. Let's see if I can get that. Back in the nut, a little bit of a perman and a lindrin. So let's get some of this on both sides of me. Put it on a brush so I can get to the horizon line and make something happen down there. You know what I do want? I feel, which is where is it? Here it is. Here, I want a little bit of orange in that. Not too much. I'll put that there. That's red gold. If you don't have red gold, you can use a deep orange. I'll start this at the bottom first. Right along the horizon line, right across there, bang, the sun's gone down. Rub it in, rub it in. Now I'm bringing it to the tip of my brush again. I'm meeting the blue. It's trying to turn green. It's just not going green, but sometimes you do get this colour in the sky. There we go, like that. Now, I want some of this in the blue here pull it out some of this over here i want the slightest i'm going for that kind of um hazy purple bit but now you can't really see it which is understandable until we put a bit of white in there there we go i just want the slightest bit of this at the bottom of our blue It's about here. Band it across. There we go.
scoot it up into that blue. Now, see, that blue is still wet thanks to the retarder and the soft titanium white that I mixed in the beginning. So if it's your first time here, you see how that's working. I'm using just the tip of my brush now, so it's just moving the paint on the canvas. It's not adding more paint. All right. I'm gonna... Now, that red gold that I put down slash deep orange, I'm going to pick some of that up. And I'll get some of this red gold now. Let it dance with some of that Indian yellow, if you want. I don't want much of this. Uh, I want a bit of it along here. See, I should have washed the brush. I think it's still got some of that darker colour, so it'll be easy. I'm easy doing it. You wash your brush. Don't try and be brave like me, because sometimes I make mistakes. Well, a lot of times I do. There we go. We've just got that in the sky. It's a simple sky, but when looking at the painting itself, it looks technical and like, oh, my goodness, I can't do that. But my goodness, you can once you know how. And if you have trouble doing this, it's just simple practising. I'm going to pick up some of this white on the corner of it because watch what I do here. I haven't done this, so hopefully it'll work. All my paintings are first time painted on camera. Now that island is here, so I might get a bit of glare just on the other side of that so it's going to pop. There you go. I want it about there. I stamped it on where I want it, about there. Now simply wipe that brush on your kitchen cloth towel or something like that. This, you might be thinking, well, what's he doing? But at the end of the day, when you look at the painting and you look at this bit of a facet that's there, you'll just see what it's done. Now, I'm going to get my blending brush, and I want to dance that into that yellow now. And look what I'm doing. You can see from this half to that half how I've blended them together. And this is just going to be a bit more of a brighter glow behind that landmass once it's there. So I've done the yellow bit. Now I'll start doing this bit here. I don't want to go into the blue bit if there is any blue and then go back down here because then I'll start making snot happen into me painting and you don't want that. I'm telling you right now and I told you that for nothing. All right, there we go. We've got a nice white glare ready to put our foreground on. I use titanium white out of the tube for me clouds. I know that's titanium white, but I don't use it because that's a soft body one. It doesn't have as much pigment in it. And a simple cloud, for me, uh, find your putter on a brush, which is just a fan. And we'll try and get some simple clouds in the sky there. Um, I'm looking here. I might just put something here right across there just to break these two up. Dancing that in, because I'm going to have a horizon row of clouds there. It's in the end of the day. This is picking up all those sky colours there. And I'm going to let it gradually blend away. Bang like that. I don't know why I say bang. Pick up another blending brush. I'm going on the corner of my brush. See where the paint is on the brush? See there? That's what part of the brush hit the canvas, not the whole foot of it. Okay, I'm going there, I'm working out, tickling the tops a little bit. Now I'm slowly coming all the way along the foot of the brush here, whether it's called the foot, I don't know. Anyway, and now I'm making turmoil. Back to the corner. So you can't tell I'm on the corner of the foot, it just looks like I'm tapping. Back to the corner, now on the whole lot, give it a bit of a teasing pull like that. Tickle the top. I'll leave that like that because I need my grey clouds at the horizon line. And I'm just creating turmoil, twisting. Look how easy that cloud was. For a beginner, you can do that. Okay, give it another pull out there if you want. Bang. you got a simple but effective cloud. Let's get some grey. It's just a toning grey. If you don't have it in the tube, I buy it in the tube because I'm doing tutorials, but you don't need it in the tubes. You can just... Mix it up if you don't have it. A lot of people message me and go, oh, I don't have that colour. Just have something close to it. Now, we've got that. Let's grab some of this with our blue colour in it, okay? We're making our bluey grey clouds there, and we might want a little bit of that in there. Let's just see what that's going to do. Yeah, that's sort of giving me the flavour that I want. It's sort of blue, but it's not blue because it's got grey in it, but it's not quite grey because it's got this permanent alindrin in it. So it's got the three three in there. There we go. That's the vibe I want. 
and these are going straight down the horizon line. So my horizon line's there. So I'm just going to grab the corner of this brush and make gaps. Look at this. It looks a bit weird. You couldn't do this with dry paint, I'm telling you right now. But I'm deliberately using the corner and making round fingertip, like a fingertip, they look like fingertips, um, things like that. I'll stop there just so you can get a gist of what the guru is doing. Yeah, I want that grey right down to the... So you never put water with it. Okay, I'm making mistakes here now, so let's not do that. Let's try and fix it up. Let's go again. We just want a row of horizon clouds down there. Blend them down into the horizon. I could have, would have, should have bought the... Um, see, that part's up there. It'll blend. Well, I hope. Um before I started mucking around with that one in the sky. So what I'm going to have to do is just, because it's dried on me, I'm going to try and just use the actual putter on a brush, the fan brush itself. And where are we? See how that's all scratchy there? I'm just going to put it on and blend it as I go and bring it down there as well, just like that. Once I put the water against this, it'll just make it look, oh, yeah, I like that sort of vibe, you know. So don't worry if you make mistakes. There we go. I'm just using the corner of this brush. If that didn't dry on me, I could have blended it as well as I'd done that, but because it dried on me, this is what's happened. Okay, but that's fine. We've saved it. So we'll put our water in. Water is simply going to be... You can go to town and make your water as detailed as you want. I'm just going to grab me blue again the one i use for the sky but before i do that i also want to grab my sand color so i'm just grabbing some look at this this is structured paint watch this stuff but i want to use it up i want to grab some of that which is yellow ochre and white i'll grab a i'll grab a um, flat brush as well so i need that that white is going to be the actual paint I'm not that keen on it, so I don't even, but I should have, there we go. I want my sand colour. So that's me sand colour. You know what? I'm looking at it and I want a bit of um, brown in it. It's not quite, that's too yellow. So I've got some burnt umber here. There's me sand colour, something like that. Now, whatever you mix, let's say it's rocks or sand colour, try and have enough to give you your, um, what do you call it, um, light mediums and darks of it all. Now, what I'm going to do is grab another flat brush, preferably, uh, where's a big one, a big soft one, this one will do. I'm going to grab me blue, and I'm going to start mixing it with, get some water on there. This is going to be the watercolour, okay? Oh, but before I do that... I need to paint the bottom with the craft paint as well. Grab some of this. I want to quick. I've used my putter on a brush for the sand, you dag. I'll quickly get this on because why I'm putting this here, this is going to help me sand and me watercolours merge. So I'm just priming this up. Get it roughly to where you want the height of it. You don't have to put it too tied up there because when you put the actual watercolour on you don't want a ridge of white paint starting to happen otherwise you'll be thinking to yourself what have I done there wrong and you learn from your mistakes so don't worry if you're making mistakes because you're just simply learning as you're traveling along your journey whether it's an art journey or whatever you're doing so now I'm just getting my bullshit stick here and I want to get a, a reasonably straight line across there save me taping it up i could have taped it up but i like to use me bullshit stick there we go picking up me watercolor this color here now what have we got and i need a darker value of this so i'm going to start where's me line there so that's I'm just going to go right across the painting. The bit I'm not painting is pretty much the sand area, okay? Pick up some more of that. Now, I want to get it right across here. I could have, would have, should have put some tape there. I'm just 
getting the colours in the water now that I want. I'm doing this very quick but basic, but so long as it's achievable for you to learn something from. And you want some darker bits in your water. So I'm going to just pick up some more of the blue and put into that maybe a little bit of that red. That'll darken it up as well. Look at this. Get both sides of your brush done. And you just simply... Oh, I've got to get the sand in there first. Let's just simply out here, just dance it on where you want it dark, like this. So I'm just dancing it on. Just pockets like this. It's easy to do this. You just stamp it on, and then you can lightly blend it into your painting the way you want it to look. Probably get some dark bits around here as well if I can. It's very wet. Now what I'm going to do, the paint's all globbed up and blobby. I'm just simply going to rub all the bulk off that on there and probably with a rag as well. Hey, Laura, Allison, yours is okay, eh? Now I'm going to grab this brush, or you can grab a softer brush, and I want to just slightly, there you go, you're waterfying everything. You're making it look like water. Now across the top there, watch this, come across... There's one go, not enough, go again. You can do it, no magic trick to it, it's just knowing what to do and you can do it. Now I'm gonna push my brush on its edge and I can drag some of them, see I just drag them. Common sense prevails in a lot of things and if you think something else is gonna happen more than what you were shown, give it a go. Now I'm gonna grab that other brush and quickly get my scene color in there. So I've got that brush there. Look at that, that was quick. Get the sand color to the water to the water now the sand is at the water but in real life the sand doesn't just meet the water the sand goes under the water or the water comes on top of the sand so how you get that i'm coming to the tip of this brush and i'm just going to put some of it there like that so the line is very blurred it's hard to distinguish where it's stopping and starting but once we put the water's edge there you will know where it's stopping and starting that way up there a bit more like that and you can probably let's just for the sake of the tutorial sake i'm just grabbing a little bit more burn umber on that brush and just mainly down here i'm going to stamp it on look at this i'm controlling where i want it stamping it on wipe it off the brush i know there's still a bit on there so you might need a rag if not and i want to get some darker values in that sand now see how easy that was now we're going to just finish that water off. So back to the water brush down here. So we want a bit dark, a bit more blue, a little bit more of that red again. I'm just making a bit more darker vibe of it because I want it where it's meeting the sand now. There we go. That'll do. Everything's still wet. I mean, what we might want a bit of a dark band here. Just something there and maybe something coming up off the painting there. Okay, simple, easy. Watch what I do here. I'm wiping it off the brush again like a little bugger. There we go. On a rag, wipe it again. And now we're just going to slightly, oh, easy does it. Back to the tip of the brush. Give that, that's where I want it. Look at that. See how easy that was? Let's go here. On the top of it, tip of the brush. I want that there. Bang. That's it. Now we're going to make some magic happen. We'll get another brush, which is my little scrumbler. A lot of you know about it, but a lot of you don't. It started life out as a flat. Let's see if I've got one here. This is pretty much what it used to look like. It was a flat. That one's starting to go, but this one's really flared out now, and I find that very useful for scrumbling and stuff. So you can get yourself some good titanium white. All that water's wet, but what I will do is dry it a bit because it's a bit too wet. I want to grab a liner brush, a reasonable liner brush. Where is my liner brush? How come things are gone? Uh, where's my long liner brush? Here it is. Now let's just work out some simple water, okay? Coming on the sand. So you can grab your titanium white. I'm putting a bit of water with it just to ink it up. So where do we want to go here? Somewhere about here. Um, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to do a bit at a time. I'm twisting it, twisting it into that dark bit. That'll do for now. Twist it off. That scrumbling brush that I got, 
That's why I dried it, but I wanted it rubbery, so as it's still going to blend. Now, I want to leave the bottom half tight, but the top half, I want to just snot around and smear into that darker colour, just like so. Get rid of that mark there. I'll have to put some more there. And we're going to go simply like that all the way along. So let's just get rid of that mark there. Just put something over it and quickly there. Now do a bit at a time. Work out what your window of opportunity is because if you do it all the way along and it dries on you, you're going to have a bugger of a time. Watch here, trying to blend it. So I know that's still wet. It's going to blend the way I want. And I'm just keeping these brush strokes left and right motion. Nothing's going up and down motion. This is just the main water with some shadow there. Boom. Let's get the top of that again, leaving the bottom tight. Leaving the bottom tight. And I'm just pushing it back in the water. Watch what you do here. You can even get some out here. This is just the froth, froth and the foam. It's just a simple way to do it. Is that looking like water? Yeah, that's looking like water. I just had to look in the monitor. We'll go there a bit. Do the same. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't read all your chats. Check out my Friday Night Lives. They're once a month. That's where I talk to you is one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, we're coming along here. Boom, boom, boom. Leaving the bottom tight. Crisscrossing that back into the water there. Getting rid of that hard edge on the top side. Now see in the water, you can put some here and start foaming it back. All right, boom, boom, boom. Where else are we? Along here, there. Watch what this does. A little bit at a time because if it dries on you, it's not going to work as easy for you as it what it is here on. <laughs> it's not quite working, so I'm going to cross over it a bit and put a bit more there. Just come along here a bit there we go I'm doing little bits at a time because I over dried it I've got another video edited video coming out soon it's all about how to practice it's even advanced beginners can learn how to practice because we don't always know everything and I'm just lacing out different folds different volumes of water lapping up onto the sand here and it's up to you how much you want to detail instead of it just stopping like that Go that extra mile and lay something off it coming out of it, just like that. So they're not just ending. I've seen some students do that with clouds. They just end them where they are and go to buggery with it. You've got to put some finesse into your paintings. You know why? Because they're going to outlive you and me altogether. And when people 50 years from now, they're going to look at it and go, I like that. The art has put time and effort into that. I do want some stones here in the... In it everywhere there. It's just what I want. They just add easy, cheap, affordable facets. And if you want, you can probably put a pocket of them all the way here. Try and put them so they don't look like you're looking at them from the top of a helicopter. They're kind of... I'll show you what I mean with this. At the moment, they can look flat like you're looking down on them from a helicopter. But I'm going to do... I'm just going to do a few here... Later on, I'll highlight them because I've got a bit more to do with this painting. You can use a better brush than what I'm using here, but I'm just using a little liner there, and I'll probably come right off the painting there like that. We're going to need the darks in them, so put pockets of dark in there. Now, just where you feel you might need some darks. Is my camera on there? Yes. Whew. I'm going to make sure the camera's on the work what you're painting, otherwise people watching will be grievously disappointed. I'm just... Nothing special there. I've just whacked in some darks. It's when we put the highlights in, it makes the magic, okay? I'll tell you what as well. I will grab another brush because I don't know why I'm killing myself with that. Now, the rock colour, got a dagger brush here, which was there. So we can use some of this to lighten it up, the white. Simple but effective. Just to the top of it, start from the very top side and then colour in your rock the way you need it. Boom. They're only little, but they need attention just as much as the big objects. Just 
Now back to these rocks here, there's a camera there, you'll start seeing these, I'm going to start putting the tops on them now. We've got the darks and all the mediums in there, tops on some of these stones in there. Not too much. Bit on there. But there we go. What I always like to do as well, see where the water's coming to the land and it retreats back. Every now and then it doesn't hurt to put your own little things in there. I like to sometimes, it's brought up some seaweed and snot. Bits of black there. Um, I'm going to wash that brush, pick up the dark colour of the water. I'm making a, just a bit of that blacky blue mixed together. Let's see if that's dark enough. And you want the tiniest, well, that's pretty much looks like black. I don't want it looking black, so I'll get it more bluey colour. I'm just mixing up down on the palette here some some of that cobalt blue, but with a little bit of black. Is it still black looking? That'll do. And you just want the tiniest little shadow. See these bits here that we put on? Just the tiniest bit, just sitting them down onto the painting there. Here and there. Very tiny. Just act nervous when you put these on. Well, we've got some little bit down under here. It's a bit too dotty. There we go. Nervously do it. Find the appropriate right dark colour to do it with. So I've got some black. Because I did that glare there, so we need this. I've got a filbert brush. So I want umbrella shapes. Keeping my glare there, don't kill too much of your glare. Bang down to there like that. Leaving some windows, I can come up a bit there. Those of you who don't know what windows are, it's where you can see sky windows. You can see the sky through the canopy. Get it down like that, so as it's not a solid blob, then the, the windows. Then you can start... I'll turn it upside down to get along here. That can go under the horizon a tid bit. But we're out in the distance, it's the ocean there. You're not going to see a reflection there, so don't worry about that. And then get this dark and tune that into the mass of the dark colour. So as you haven't got a solid line there, it looks a bit realistic. And now all this can be dark-like. So give that a dry and we'll put our tree colours on there. Now, I need my green. So what I usually do is three greens, the three amigos for the greens as well. So you've got your light, medium and dark. I mean, dark green is normally the, I'll bring you down to the palette. Forest green, sap green and yellow green. Okay, forest green, sap green and yellow green. So I normally with my forest green, I put a little bit of yellow in there just to turn the lights on. Not too much because you want it to be dark. There we go. Now you can have it inky enough so it'll stamp onto your dark paint up there. This is simple. A lot of you followers of mine have seen this, but it's so effective as well. Now, I'll just show you. You don't want to come and leave the dark at the top there, see? I mean, this colour here, you're probably not going to see it until we get the next one on. But you want this on and a little bit beyond that black, okay? A little bit beyond. Just control the edge. See how it's just on, soft there, heavy there, soft there. Gee, I love this brush. Just beyond the black. Okay, and then we give this a, get some pizzazz in them. Give this a quick dry. Grabbing the sap green with some yellow. Sap green with some yellow. Where are we? There you go. And then we'll just simply highlight it with the yellow green. The yellow green has a bit of brown in it, which is such a good flavour for your tree canopies. Okay, we've dried it. Now we're going to put probably right up to there. 
leave some of the, I want to do about 75% with this colour. Okay, watch. So we've done the black, which is the shadow, the base colour. We've put our forest green on. Now we want to cover 75% of that forest green. Come down, making the shapes that you want. Over here, leaving the dark at the horizon line so it looks like there's depth there. If you have a question you ever want answered in my next Friday Night Live, simply comment it below. It gets printed out, your name and question gets read out in my next Friday Night Live show. So I've done about, I don't know, 75%. Now, the same brush, that filbert brush I've been using, I simply wash it out. And now the yellow green, this colour here is beautiful. We could probably grab a little bit more yellow if we've put not enough, haven't left enough brightness there. There we go. This is really going to, now you want about 30% of it covered with this now, okay? So we're coming into there again. Now you want about 30% of this. I'll get my cable out of the way of the paint there. <laughs> and let's start making sure it's going to stand out first. Yeah. Or maybe a little bit more than 30, but you know what I mean. You don't want to go over the whole lot. And there's that. That's kind of... So sort of look at it and think, yeah, light's coming here, light's coming there. I don't know, just... You'll learn as you go. I'm not the greatest at trees, but I try and create something that's simple and effective for a beginner. And even at advanced, beginners can learn something from it. I've even learnt simple things from a beginner. I've seen something they've done and I've learnt something from that as well. So it doesn't matter who you are. You can always learn something from anybody. You're never too good to know everything. There we go. And you can see, see how this dark looks a bit too like it come out of the factory. Let's just distort that a bit, eh? So let's bring some of it right down over it there. Just start like, there we go. I'm grabbing the black on a flat brush. Flat brush with black. Grab your Malcolm stick, or should I say your mouse stick. Where's the bottom of the painting? There it is there. And we want this coming all the way from there, and it's reaching right out to there, bang. And then, want it nice and thin there, boom. Uh, it's, oh, yeah, she's nice and fat there. Look at that. Oh, it doesn't have to be too fat. Oh, don't knock your water off. On the electronics in, you'll be buggered. So where are we? I usually try and find something not so detaily or time consuming when I do a live painting because I like to give it about an hour. I'm not sure how long my camera battery's gonna last. One time I did a live and the damn thing shut off on me like a mad scientist browns and a bit of gray where's me gray there's me gray there get a bit more of a gray down there now i'm going to get some the the gray i'll put the darker color with that there we go that's the color i want this is going to be me me brownie gray color and i can always get a bit of that brown solid enough to put enough dark nuggets in there sometimes you need some nuggets in your work i'll show you what I mean by nuggets. Now we're simply going to create the roundness of our tree coming around, creating the roundness. We've dried that black. Yeah, I dried that black. Right along the edge there. Pick up more. 
Let it burn up in bands. It doesn't matter. Let it all happen. Don't just remember. Don't put lines on the edge of everything. There's no line. There's no lines on the edge of stuff in nature. So just remember that in your paintings. I've seen some people do some beautiful work, but the simple lines they got on the edge is just sort of not giving it justice. And it's just a matter of they can go back and um, scrumble those lines out of it. We've all done it, so don't worry. It's just learning. So there we go there. We've got our tree trunk. Now we will get a bit more grey into that. So what I'm going to do is simply wash the brush and wipe it, picking up the grey down there, just the grey on its own, and try and get some... Yeah, just breaking up here and there. Boom. There we go. Now we'll give it some nuggets, eh? I'm grabbing the pure burn number now for me nuggets. Is it dark enough? And just every now and then, get these nuggety dark bits in there. Get a bit more. I'm going, to, I'm going to put a little bit of black with it so it's not quite black and it's not quite brown. It's a bit of the both mixed together. There we go. I'm just using the corner of this flat brush. I'm getting the forest green on its own. Okay, flat brush. And we'll just get a couple of, you make the top bit, then you just scratch it down, bang, bang, bang. But you don't have to say the word bang. Uh, there's one there. We'll get one coming out here. So he's cocking along there like that. And then he's going to come down that way. The highlights is what separates all this puts puts the others in front and behind. See how easy that was. Look, do another one out here. Look, contact. Uh, 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 that's the angle I want. Then start, we'll get the front of that. Mm -hmm. Pulling down with some hairy lines there. Just, the more you do these, the more fun, get that off there, the more fun you'll have doing them and the more you'll understand how you can bring them to looking a bit more like not a bad type of palm, you know. I'm doing stuff in this palm now that I have never found myself doing before and it's all this uh -uh bit and, uh -uh like that. See, even in the middle of it, I'm doing that because it's like the wind's gone through it. And then what you do to get rid of that undernourished look within all the prongs, Put something there as well. Getting just around in a wind. Look at that simple. To get rid of that undernourished look in the middle, just simply beef it up a bit. Beef it up with points. Get a scraggler down there. Beef it up. Now you can dry that. Now we're going to simply wash your brush and we're going to add the middle tone. So you can use the same colours you lose, used for these trees over here if you want. So we'll just go to the sap green, bit of yellow in there, the sap green. Now do dry your work. I haven't dried mine. Hopefully I can get away with it. Leave a lot of that dark in the middle and scoot along, work out where you want bits coming down. Don't cover too much of that, the guts of it up. You need depth in there. And you're pretty much doing the same thing again. Real simple way to do palm trees. Well, I reckon it is anyway. Everyone's got their own two bobs worth on how things should be. <laughs> and we're coming to the yellow green. A little bit of yellow into that. And this is it. There's a bit of water, the water, the right amount of water, not too much, but just enough. It'll make it come from your brush onto the canvas there. 
what a nice bit coming from the guts there and turning down there. You, you need bits in front. Let's grab some water. Okay. Just bits of lighter hitting stuff here and there. Let's get. And then analyze. I've, I've said that in a few videos. I don't know if everyone's heard me say that a lot or not. It's important to analyze your work. That's where you go back and just give it the final rub and touch and tweak. Um, you know, you're just giving it that final touch. I've got a little bit more yellow in the paint here, trying to just find bits that might be in front there like that, just trying to create some kind of realism in my tree there. It's a quick one, but, I mean, I could have some more pandanus out the side here, but that'll do. I'm going to autograph it. So I'll autograph it down here. And I want to thank everybody who supports my content. Be sure to become a patron. You get early content access to all my content. And like I said before, become a member of my uh, my YouTube channel here. Keep a look out on my community page, everybody. See what's coming up. And those who don't support me, don't worry. A lot of people love to support, but other people can't. That's okay. Nothing has changed. Everything is still cost you nothing to watch. Okay. So we've done a live painting today. Bit of a coastal, tropical type of I don't know, that sort of vibe going on there. And some practice, whatever you need to practice, you always can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun painting this. I hope you learned something along the way. Give me a comment below if you have any questions, like I said, and I'll be answered in my next Friday Night Live. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Check out another video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.